Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Matt Christofoli with ACAP Advisors and Accountants. I'm joined today by R.O. Gorian. Um, today, we are going to be talking about Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs, which is better, who is it better for, and uh, a lot of other details. Um, this is the ACAP recap where we go beyond the blog to go into a little more in depth about some questions that our clients have asked and our prospective clients have asked. Uh, we've decided to put these in video format to give you guys a little bit more information. So Ara, what is better, traditional IRA or a Roth IRA and why? So that's a great question, Matt, and it really depends. Uh, we are big fans of the Roth IRA and we're also big fans of the Roth IRA for people who are high income earners because they don't traditionally qualify for the Roth IRA, so there's a, a backdoor mechanism uh, for getting into the Roth IRA. But to answer your first question first, which is better the Roth IRA or the, reg, uh, the regular IRA, uh, it depends on the client. So if a client wants a tax deduction, they would go for the traditional IRA to get the tax deduction, right. whereas if they want that tax-free growth, they would go for the, the Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the differences, just some quick differences between the two, the regular IRA has been around for many years. Uh, it's a more uh, well-known uh, type of account. And basically what happens is you put in a maximum of $6,000 a year uh, if you're under the age of 50. Uh, you get a tax deduction for that contribution and that money grows tax deferred. So when you start taking it out during retirement, uh, that, that's when you'll start paying tax on it, not right. during that, that growth phase. Now the regular IRA does have some limitations to it and that uh, during that, that growth period, you're not allowed to take the money out without significant penalties and taxation. Mm -hmm. So that's a big drawback. Another drawback to the regular IRA is that it has what's called RMDs, Required Minimum Distribution. And what that means is if you've got that money in that tax-deferred IRA and you don't draw the money out even during retirement, you can only delay drawing that for only uh, so long. Right. Once you reach 70 and a half, you have to start taking money out. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's regular IRA that's been around for as long as we know. The Roth IRA, on the other hand, is a really powerful savings vehicle because it, uh, it works just like the regular IRA and they can put $6,000 in. You don't get a tax deduction for that contribution, but that money grows tax-free. And there are no required minimum distributions that I mentioned earlier. And the real other benefit is that whatever you put in, you can take out any time without tax or penalty. And that's a really big advantage that most people are not familiar with. They think that the Roth IRA, once you put in there, it's, it's locked in for a long time, but that's not the case. And Sometimes I think that's actually a good thing because you don't want people kind of tapping right. into it early on. <laughs> I say this seeing, seeing it as kind of like a piggy bank for right. uh, intense, for all intents and purposes. So yeah, I think um, with the, the the Roth IRA, it, it it's I want to say underutilized because people really want that tax deduction each year. Right. Um, but you brought up a good point. What happens when you're a high income earner and the Roth IRA, the sorry, the traditional IRA is not an option. You can't get that tax deduction. Then what? So that's also an excellent point. So if, if, if your income is above a certain threshold or if you are eligible for a 401k through yeah. your employer, then that se severely limits your ability to deduct the IRA from your income. Okay. So if you fall into either one of those two camps, then then, a, uh, then it's better to do the what's called a backdoor Roth IRA. Because what happens with a backdoor Roth IRA is you put the money into a regular IRA, mm -hmm. uh, you don't take a deduction, you don't qualify for that uh, right. deduction, and then you subsequently convert it to a Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you've kind of circumvented the law, it's called a backdoor Roth IRA, it's not, it's not, it sounds shady, but it's not, that it's completely under the, uh, the realms of the law, but you circumvent the current law to allow you to get access to the Roth IRA uh, by kind of doing the, uh, the regular IRA first. And, you know, this strategy can be complicated and, um, when reporting it on annual tax returns, we see time and time again that it's done incorrectly. And as a result, people are being taxed when they move it from their non-deductible IRA to their Roth IRA, when in actuality, it shouldn't be a taxable event. So yeah. it's like a double whammy. Yeah, that, <laughs> man, that comes up all the time all the because time. They, they, for, they forget that they've done that conversion, they report it incorrectly on their tax return, they don't do the proper filings. Mm -hmm. And it, it becomes very problematic. In the sense, sometimes you get double taxed on it. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's after tax money that they put right. on the account, and then they pay tax on it when they convert it. Um, so it's really important to keep the accountant abreast of what's going on. That's something we speak for our personal clients that we do their tax returns. We obviously um, handle that. When we're working with clients who have outside um, accounting firms, we 
correspond with them so that they know what's going on because sometimes the tax forms um, don't really highlight what actually took place and taken at face value will be reported incorrectly. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So that's, that's the big difference between the Roth and the regular IRA. Awesome. Um, this has been the ACAP recap. Um, in closing, open up a Roth IRA. They're great. Um, thank you for joining us. We hope you found this information valuable and you know where to find us, acapam.com. I don't know.